<laughs> oh, snap. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well, welcome everyone to Make Me Smart. I'm Kimberly Adams, and we attempt to make today make sense over here. The ever youthful Kimberly Adams. I'm Kyle Rizdahl. Thanks to everybody for joining us on the YouTube live stream. We got discard going. We got, uh, if you're on the pod later on, we're going to do some economics on tap. A little something different today. We're going to do the news. Uh, we'll do a little, uh, what are you drinking? We'll do a little uh, half full, half empty. And the thing uh, that we're going to try is during half full, half empty, it's going to ask for a little audience participation for those of you on the live stream. So look, if you're listening to this, not on Friday afternoon, sadly, ignore that part, I suppose. Um, <laughs> but if you're on the live stream, we're going to have a thing for you. Okay. All right. Okay, good. Anyway, what are you drinking? Uh, well, first, let me just address lots of people in the YouTube chat are asking what? about my shattered glass situation yesterday. Oh, um, yeah. There is still no answer. I, you know, nothing else is damaged or broken or moved or anything. I suspect it may have been the fire alarms that shattered it with noise, know. but I, I, it feels Th that would stretch. have to be really loud. That would have to be it's really extremely loud. loud extremely loud but anyway do any okay. of your neighbors what am i uh to their ears uh several oh, well, people's right. pets you know have problems oh, but right. we will all see right. like right. i posted anyway, on the message board and nobody seemed surprised okay my drink huh. um i did yes. another one of my sort of kitchen random cocktails so when i went to europe with my family earlier this year we went to croatia and i got this mm -hmm. uh, liquor called lombic in a bunch of different flavors and one of them was cherry and so i decided to see if i could make a twist on a manhattan with lambic so instead of using vermouth i used the lambic 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 i'm not sure and okay. you know i had some rosemary in my garden and so i'm and i did some rosemary bitters and so i've got sort of this mystery drink. And then of course the fancy cherries, which I have de-refrigeratorized. And so it looks like this. Yes. Good for you. That's oh, it. and you've got the appropriate stemware too. All right, so how does it taste? Mm -hmm. It's good. It's um it tastes different than a Manhattan, but it does taste good. Okay. I like it. All I, right. I would drink okay. it again. All right, what's everybody go. else? All right. Uh you what is good. everybody else drinking? Wait, we have, we have to back up for a minute. Wait, hang on. We have to back up for a minute. Pat Walsh. Pat Walsh says it's pawpaw season in Ohio, so I'm having a pawpaw margarita. What are pawpaws? <gasps> Way what? down yonder in the pawpaw patch. You don't know that song? No, no? I don't. Okay. Wait, sorry. We pawpaws. have to throw somebody off. Wait, wait. Hang on. We have to throw uh, Dagnome off the YouTube chat because he's having an Elysian Night Owl pumpkin ale. Just saying. Throw him off. Mel, if you Ooh, just. Oh, boy. <laughs> Look, I give no quarter. No, I'm just kidding. Anyway. Fair. Pawpaws. Pawpaws are a fruit that is actually indigenous to the United States, I believe. It typically grows in like the mid-Atlantic or and Midwestern region. You don't really see it in stores because they're very delicate and they're very hard to like transport. And also they um they they take the trees take a long time to mature. So you'd basically need to you know, wait a long time. And they typically grow huh. down in gullies and ravines and like near streams and they grow in these right. patches. So it's like a tree. And in order to harvest them, you have to shake the tree really hard and let the pawpaws fall down. And so, um, yeah, this is a real thing. I, I was just going to say, I didn't, I didn't expect this detailed an explanation, but you go. Well, That's, because I, I go yeah. and harvest pawpaws with my uncle David way down yonder uh, in the pawpaw patch behind his house. And so last year we got like a bumper crop of pawpaws. And he went down there last weekend to see how they were doing. And they're not quite ripe yet. So they are uh, delicious. They've got kind of a combo like mango, banana, custardy flavor. Oh, wow. There you All go. right. I could go for that. All right. What's in the yeah. Discord? Who's drinking what in the Discord? Okay, um, we've got a uh, Bodding something or the other pub ale. So yeah. yes, okay, somebody's drinking that and water that Colin's drinking. Good job, Colin. That's healthy. Um, Modern. Oh, no, that's somebody <laughs> talking about that. I was about to say, <laughs> that's, no, that's somebody talking about their COVID shot. <laughs> okay. yeah. 
All right, what you got? <laughs> uh, I'm drinking my standard uh, Stone FML, 8.5% ABV, just kind of hanging out on a Friday afternoon. Actually going to the Dodgers yeah. this afternoon, but the kids are driving, so I don't Oh, care. cool. Yeah, yeah. Go, they're playing, they're, look, they're playing St. Louis, Albert Pujols. So saying. you support me. You're not, a, you're not a sports ball guy. Yeah, they're a person. Anyway. I mean, I am always going to be a Cardinals and Blues fan, just like because I'm from oh, St. Right. Louis, well, but yeah, I don't yeah. necessarily follow it. I will, Fair. however, still maintain my bitterness about the whole Rams situation. Like, I'm that level of sports fan. Enough to be bitter, they but not enough to follow. started in L.A. Don't give me the whole St. Louis Rams thing. That's hooey. That's baloney. They took a lot of money from St. Oh. Louis and well, oh, yes. threw oh, they us sure did. under yes, the bus. Sure. Absolutely. That yes, is the absolutely. issue. They, they totally that did. was like they greed. Totally That's fair. Epic That's, greed. Yes. That's the bitterness. Uh, epic greed. We would have, if greed. they totally had been fun. nice about it, like Midwestern nice, we would have been like, you know what? We're sad to see you go, but we understand. Go ahead. You steal money from us yeah. and we hate you forever. <laughs> the, the title of this episode. You steal money from us, we hate you forever. All right. So let's do some news. news. You go first. Holy cow. My goodness. Okay. <laughs> you know, we're like done with the podcast and haven't gotten to the news. Yeah, okay, right. really quickly. Oof. So back in January, remember that huge volcanic mm. eruption near Tonga that made that massive yes. cloud and everything you like bet. that knocked off the internet forever? So now just a little just a bit northeast of that volcano, another volcano erupted underwater and is now creating an island. And that island is not like is now like six acres large and growing because of the lava coming to the surface and everything oh, like that. Cool. And it's big enough to be seen from space now. Anybody who has small children might automatically hear the parallels here to the little Disney short lava. So there's this little movie that Disney did about a vault and it has a song that goes with it where a big volcano is like all alone in the ocean and he's singing this song about being alone and another underwater volcano can hear him under underwater and ev eventually erupts and comes to the surface but by then the big volcano has already erupted and gone down and so like it's real life but they end up wow. together in the end that's cool. but it's very cute but it's like that's cool really what happened in the short is happening in real life so the anyway ever expanded it's planet. cute very cool there you go yes uh, my, mine is considerably less cute, uh, and I apologize for that. But, you know, I'm an economics reporter, and the economy right now is not very cute. So mm -hmm. I, I was prompted uh, to mention this by a tweet from Neil Irwin, formerly of the Washington Post, formerly of the New York Times, and now at Axios, where he is uh, chief economics correspondent, I believe that's his title. Anyway, super experienced guy in watching the global economy. And here's what he said today, this morning. It feels like today might turn out to be a momentous day in economic financial history in ways that aren't known to the vast majority of people at the time, a wee bit August the 9th, 2007-ish. So let me back up for a minute. August the 9th of 2007 is when the very first inklings of uh, the subprime mortgage debacle became clear. When uh, a money market fund, or a mutual fund actually, um, uh, decided that it wasn't going to be able to it stop withdrawals, right? And and it just got uglier from there, as we all know. Here's why Neil said that. <clears throat> and I would just expand that to say this week. Here's the challenge. The Federal Reserve, as we all know, raised interest rates today, uh, this week. Um, 75 basis points, three quarters of 1%. The thing is that basically every other major central bank in the world also raised interest rates except the Bank of Japan, right? Mm. Sweden, Norway, Switzerland, the Bank of England, the European Central Bank will in a couple of weeks certainly raise interest rates. And they will say something on the order of, we're gonna keep going as long as we need to. And the Federal Reserve this week, Jay Powell said, we're gonna do this as long as we need to. So we have a huge amount of economic, fiscal, of monetary policy tightening, right? They are making money more expensive on purpose. That presents two problems. Number one, interest rates have been at or below zero for the better part of 15 years in most developed economies, okay? So money has been basically free and now money's getting more expensive and people have borrowed boatloads of free money and they're gonna have to start paying it back when money is more expensive. And that obviously becomes really challenging, right? That's item number one. Item number two is that when that happens, economic activity slows down. 
And since the tightening is happening globally, economic activity globally will slow down. So the idea that you've heard on Marketplace and other places for a very long time about a soft landing, that's out the window. And I just want to make sure everybody knows that. That's I it. saw a tweet yesterday, and forgive me if this turns out to be patently false, but <laughs> someone was saying that somebody who buys a house today for somewhere in the 300,000s will probably have roughly the same mortgage payment as somebody who bought a house in the 600,000s, like last year. Right. So that's, that's what I was talking about earlier this week, the monthly nut, right? Those payments, mm -hmm. because, I mean, the 30 year now, a week ago, the 30 year average was, uh, sorry, two weeks ago, the week ended the 15th. So it's a week ago, sorry, was 6.02%. That's from Freddie Mac, the big mortgage conglomerate, right? This week, 6.29%. So that's up a whole quarter of a percentage point in a week. And that mm -hmm. to your monthly payment is enormous. Yep. Yep. For so sure. buckle up. Buckle, buckle up. up. All right, everybody. Let's see. All right, sorry. What's next? Well, you were the downer that's yesterday. Okay. I'm the downer today, I guess. You know what? We balance the downing. Yes. That's right. We balance <laughs> the downing. That's right. That's right. All right, Drew. Okay, this is Half Full, Half Empty, the game hosted by the one and only Drew Jostad. And if you're not watching the YouTube live stream, please hop into the chat. Drew, you're up. First topic is maybe a little bit close to home for Kai. Half full or half empty on paint supply shortage. Uh, I'm literally looking at my house now, the south side of the house, which is to say the sun exposure house side of the house. And it is, it's a, it, in its original form, it was a lovely red. I have a sort of a farmhousey thing and now it's faded and and a little bit peeling and we really need to get it painted but there is still a paint shortage in this economy i talked to a guy who runs a paint company in easton pennsylvania um and he said yeah it's going to cost me more and you might have to wait for your paint and i'm just bummed because the house looks like hell it really does sorry that's so interesting one of my good friends is getting ready to paint her house and she was saying that uh all these companies that were took forever to get on the calendar like a couple of months ago are now yep. suddenly available because lots of people are putting these kinds of big projects on hold for fear of a potential recession and tightening up their spending and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And she hasn't mentioned that, but she did mention how expensive it was. So maybe that's why mm -hmm. I'm going to go half empty. I mean, it's another one of these signs yeah. of, of where the economy is going. So that's where I am. I, I, yeah, I think it, yes, totally. And just on your point about another sign, I think it's really important that, and, and I tried to do this on marketplace from time to time, but it's really important. We all sort of stow these little markers in our minds so that nobody's surprised when the recession mm -hmm. happens, right? Because, that's how you tell what's going on. You pay attention to the little markers and you remember them and you're like, oh yeah, that happened a week ago. This is happening now. So X, Y, and Z are going to happen. And that's just the way to do it. Yeah. House looks like hell. Anyway. True. <laughs> okay. What's next? Half full or half empty on the IRS modernizing or attempting to modernize by hiring 5,000 new customer service representatives. Full? Half full? Yeah, full. No, I'm all the way. Full. You know what? I'm going to say half full because good luck hiring right now. <laughs> well, yeah, fair Finding point. Those people. But sorry, I'm just, yeah, I'm just Googling uncollected taxes in the United States mm. because oh, okay. we leave uh, IRS chief, and this is a year ago, IRS chief says $1 trillion in taxes goes uncollected every year. So you got to hire people. You got to spend money to make money. I'm all this the way is true, but these are customer service people, not investigators, which is what they need to get that other problem. Well, yeah, but you know, I'll take a yeah, start, all, a small start. It, yeah, you know, it's all progress. Yeah. Yes, all right. What's all next, progress. Drew? Half full or half empty on the influence mm -hmm. of memes in politics. Oh, this was such a good interview. All the way empty. You oh my gosh. So we interviewed. Um, the author of this book called meme wars on the tech show this week and she was talking about how um, the use of political memes is basically destroying democracy and how content moderation struggles to adapt to them and all the different ways that they flourish online and how a meme is kind of the, the, the most interesting part of that interview was when she said oh go ahead kai 
No, I was I was agreeing with what you were about to say because this absolutely was the most interesting part of the interview. Go ahead. You do it. Okay. Was, your was that a meme is effective because it immediately on in a visual way creates an in and an out group. Either you think the image is funny and you get it and you're willing to share it or you're not. And the people who don't right. get it and are sensitive to it, those are just like stupid people or we don't like them. And yep. without even having a conversation, you split, you make the divide and you put people yep. in camps. And it, that was really fascinating. What were you going to say was the most interesting? No, that's literally what I was going to say. It was, it was oh. totally fascinating. It was, a, it was a great interview. And honestly, it should have been more than whatever it was, three minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah. Maybe we'll run it when I'm hosting PM next time. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. What's next, Drew? Oh, wait, we didn't say half full or half empty. Sorry. Uh, I'm oh. going to go half empty because um, it's bad. Yeah. Yep. Totally agree. Half empty. All right. Um, reading from The Guardian here, the GIF search engine Giphy in a filing with the UK's competition regulator said that GIFs have, quote, fallen out of fashion as a content form and are for boomers and cringe. Are you half right, full so, or half empty? Oh, my God. So, sorry. Very mini rant coming here. Number one, it's GIF. I will die on this hill. Number two, GIFs are bull they're just easy and facile and i just yeah okay that's where i am that's it notice i didn't swear I am Bridget, cringe you're because i love them i send oh, many God. gifs or gifs or giffies in the marketplace slack all the time there's one that's like a little goat running up to you and then it says hi i love that one there's one with a little dog pops up out of like blankets. Love that one. There are many, many gifts. I am cringe. <laughs> I am going to own it, but I love me a good GIF gif. And I am not a boomer. And so <laughs> I appreciate the that anybody will say whatever they can in a legal filing to get their stuff done. But uh, I, I fully appreciate them and I enjoy them. I, uh, I just, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I, I, and I understand there's a no small part of this that makes me sound, you know, hey, you kids get off my lawn, but whatever. Whatever. <sighs> <laughs> Rachel in the chat says they are the ultimate millennial expression. Yes. Yes, they that are. That's right. Thank you. That's right. <laughs> okay. What's right. next? What else we got? Is this the last one? Yeah. Do you want to? Should I? Should right. I get yeah, the topic? Yeah, this is the last one. Okay. No, no, no. I want everybody to get ready. Yeah, so before there's... we give the yeah. answer to this one, if you're listening live via the YouTube or live stream, we are going to put a poll in the chat and you can tell us if you're half full or half empty on this one. So that way we know a better than me trying to skim the comments, uh, how you all feel about it. So look out for the poll if you're on the YouTube chat and Drew, go ahead. Half full or half empty on taking a little ukulele lesson with about a hundred of your closest friends <laughs> in an airplane. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh my All right, gosh. So we're so gonna give this a little time. Let's do the backstory of this. So, so let's do the backstory. So Southwest Airlines the other day uh tweeted this out that they had it was a flight from I don't know where to I don't know where, but they had done did they hell give everybody hell. a ukulele or, Long Beach or did they just like do or or did they just <laughs> like do ukulele lessons? I think they gave no, everybody they gave a ukulele. Everybody right? a ukulele. I know. They gave everybody on the plane, 150, whatever it was, people on a 737 that Southwest flies, a ukulele, and they did ukulele lessons. And was it you who put it in the chat or was it Stephanie? Who, I, who, I did. It was me. Chat. Somebody it put it in the me. Slack. <laughs> and, and I, my response was they ought to just ground South, the FAA ought to just ground Southwest Airlines on principle. You, I think, said it's your worst nightmare, right? But the best part of it was that Amtrak quote tweeted Southwest yeah, Airlines yeah and said, by the way, we have a quiet car, which was perfection. Yeah. But then everybody in the marketplace, Slack started piling on and basically talking about all the other instruments that could have potentially been worse, like um, recorders, accordions. Oh God, um, record recorders would have been horrible. Can you imagine recorders? Jesus. Harmonicas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. All right, so so you and I are you and I are both half empty. Let us uh, sorry, yes. I'm gonna go to the slide for this one because I can't figure it out on the YouTube thing. So okay. uh, let's see. 
It's so this is from Bridget. Poll results are at the top of the chat box, which I don't have time to get there. 177 votes, 46% half full, 54% half empty so far. I will tell you, I don't know who's half full on this. What? Ah. Bridget was half full. Of course you were half full, Bridget. Oh my Good gosh. grief. Okay, fine. Uh, the, now we have 189 this, votes sorry, and it's mostly half empty. We're at 56% half empty now. So All right. you lose, All Bridget. Right. <laughs> Bridget, God. It's a good thing I'm not allowed to fire anybody in this company. Good God. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Bridget would not Someone be the first person I would fire. pleasant people are Let half full. <laughs> Oh my God. Kay says pleasant people oh are half God. full on this one. Oh my God. <laughs> All, All right, right. That is anyway, it for us so, today. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody who participated in the poll. That was fun. And we are going to be back on Monday. If you have questions you want us to answer for our What Do You Want to Know Wednesday show, or if you have a answer to the Make Me Smart question that you want to share or anything else, uh, especially if it's economy, business, or tech-related, send those our way, please. And thank you. Our email, as you probably know already, if you're a regular listener to this podcast, is make me smart at marketplace.org. You can leave us a voice message at 508 827 6278. 508 you be smart. Make Me Smart is produced by Marissa Cabrera. Today's episode was engineered by, engineered by Drew Jostad, and the senior producer is Bridget Bodner. Mel Rosenberg and Emily McCune do the YouTube live stream and our Friday game. Drew Jostad did the theme music. The director of On Demand is one Donna Tan. Saw Donna in person this week. That was nice. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, she was down for Remus. It was nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah, apparently it went well. I don't know. Good stuff. There should be, do we, have, do we have like a video of that? We should if we don't. I haven't, I haven't seen it, but I'd like to watch.